Good afternoon. I'm, I'm first of all honoured that I've been asked to do a little bit of a 20 minute talk. I, I, I don't know why I'm here because I already want to listen to Jenny. Um, but uh, I've just uh, kind of just come up with something all based around digital for us to kind of look at perhaps just 20 minutes, half, half an hour. Anybody wants to discuss anything, then we'll just do it live. Yeah, much, much better than uh, kind of just thinking about it. So for a change, we're going to think inside the box instead of outside the box. Because I think for too many of us, um, we're trying to be clever instead of trying to be realistic with both our businesses and actually the future of what we're selling within photography and things, really. So um, we're going to just look at some kind of ideas how they're going to work. Now, there's going to be some crossover, probably what uh, Ronan and Jenny and kind of everybody else says about digital files, which is good because it just uh, kind of re-endorses everything. Um, but probably these are the three main questions that I get given by photographers, no matter what I'm doing, um, why should I sell them? Now, I was recently invited over to Dublin with 3XM and a few other photographers to discuss the future of photography. And one of them was, um, why do photographers still worry about selling di digital files? You know, and it's kind of, um, if I go back, you know, 20-odd uh, 20 years, people asked if they could buy the negatives. Or what was worse, do we get the negatives? Nothing's changed. It's just a different word now, I promise you. And you either want to sell them or you don't want to sell them. That's, that's key. However, how much you sell them for is something that we can actually really look at and divulge and everything else, and we'll have a little look. Um, but as far as I believe today that the future of photography is based on selling digital files, whether you like it or not. And uh, this is a kind of a discussion that we'll have if, if you want to join a beer one night or whatever. Um, it's a huge thing, but just like a commercial photographer, and we had a big commercial side of our, biz our business as well, some of you know that. And there we sold our service. We sold our sur sur service as half day and whole, a whole day. And then on top of that, the client paid for their transparencies. Um, that's how it worked. Uh, if it was a big client, they pay for usage rights and everything else, okay? So a, a bit more complicated. So as far as um, selling digital files is concerned, it, it's basically we're becoming what the commercial photographer still is today and what was. With the exception is that for many of you, especially in portrait photography, you're not getting a fee, a sitting fee, because that sitting fee is something that it closes the door to most clients coming through and having your experience, your, coming through your business in some way. So, of course, for me, I want you to take away that door <laughs> so I can allow clients to flood through them. Then we have to really make sure how and why they should be buying our digital files from us. Uh, at a reasonable price and things really. Is everybody selling digital files or who's, who, who's not? Hands up. So you all are. So you're basically the first room I've ever been to full of photographers in my life who've already had the conversion. So applaud, I don't mean applaud, but well done to you, all right? So we're not having to convert you to begin with. Um, how much do I charge for them? That's, that's probably the big thing, yeah? The most expensive... Disc of images, going back a while ago, because some of you know I'm not really a photographer anymore. Obviously, all my time is actually based around Academy and experience with it. But the most expensive disc we've ever sold is 5,000 quid. And you can ask Debbie. You go, go downstairs and say, what was the most expensive digital files that you ever sold? It was a wedding, yeah. And, uh, but then she'll kick herself at the same point. So please go down and ask her, because she forgot to say plus VAT. All right? And 5,000 quid plus 17.5% at that time is a load of money. And so it's those things you go, oh, I haven't charged enough. Even at five grand on top of what they spent three and a half grand on their package wasn't enough for us because we're greedy pigs. And that's it. In a nutshell, you get greedier and gre greedier. You keep putting your prices up and up to the point where they don't want to buy it anymore and they think that we're, we're rip-off artists. And, and to some extent, we are. Many of you in the room are not busy enough to really warrant having an average price at a decent amount per client. You're still looking at the big spenders to kind of make up your imbalance within the business. And I've got quite a few people on the experience group um, who are exact, exactly that. And once I retrain their left brain into realizing that if they start to look at their business in a totally different way, and they start, first of all, looking at being busy, that's the first stage, is a busy photographer is a profitable photographer no matter what. Especially in today, when 
digital doesn't cost you a penny. Because years ago, a client coming through our door, five rolls of film, eight, eight pound a roll, straight away you're down. Whereas today, it's costing you nothing to actually service a client to the basic ability with it. But then, of course, we, we kind of have these discussions about how much do I charge, and we're going to look at a slide from only 72 hours ago from within our experience group, okay, in a good way, but in a bad way as well. So how much should I charge? Well, how much do you think it's worth? I, I think a digital image by itself, finished to a some extent, is worth around about 25 quid. Anybody? Much higher than that. How much do you, do you mind me? Uh, do you don't have to share anything with me at all, all right? How much? 75 pound each? Okay, cool. Anybody higher than that? Okay. Anybody around lower than £25 a digital image for a minute? Yeah? That's okay. There is nothing wrong, all right? Because I basically have three price lists. And I've, some of you know this already, but I have a Desperado price list. I have the middle of the road. That's a hard one. And then we have the extreme price list. And the extreme price list is getting more to you. The £25 is the middle of the road price list. That means that we just need a sustainable amount of clients coming through our door times the 25 quid, times the amount, as it were, and we've got a business to play with. However, at £75 an image, minimising what they're doing, it gives us a spend level, but we're in search more of that client. And probably we're going to have, I'm not looking at you guys now, but probably we're going to have a difficulty kind of getting more people to spend at the higher level because it's all about our av averages. Now, anybody can say I have £600 average, £700 average, £1,200 average, and it basically means nothing if you're doing less than 10 sessions a week because it does nothing because then you're a part-time photographer. So we've got to decide on what kind of business we are and what kind of business we want to be. It doesn't mean you've got to do 10 sessions because in lifestyle, some of us just want to do five or six, or three, or whatever you want to do. That's your decision. For me, I look at it, well, you know what? It's costing me the same to, mar uh, to market for five clients as it is going to be to get 10 clients or 15 clients and so on. So it's, it's a different way to look at things. And when photographers, I mean, I'm sure you've all sat down and listened to some bloke or woman at the front here that ramps on about how much they get clients to spend and how much their averages are and everything else. I don't work on an average client. I work on an average per hour. You start to work on your average per hour, it will freak the hell out of you. It's like, that's why most wedding photographers, we're not on about wedding photography, but most wedding photographers would basically be paying the client to actually be doing their wedding for them based on the hours that they charge and things really. So again, it's the different little ways with it. How do I deliver the product? That's easy today. Years ago, it wasn't. But I've still got some people who are selling them on CDs. Pretty much, this Mac does not have a CD or DVD. Any laptop you buy tomorrow, today, does not have a CD and a DVD with it. So if you're still putting images on CD because they're costing you four, 40 pence, you're basically caveman in the world of digital delivery. Yeah? So I know it's 40 pence, but you have to look at the value chain. And the value chain, if you haven't heard about it before, is the way that we kind of bring everything together to make the client go, oh, yeah, I really need to spend money with you. And that's a, you might think they don't want to spend money. And most of my time in the first six months with anybody who joins us through the, biz, the business side of things, I have to re-educate their brains in away from forums and Facebook groups who are telling you people do not want to spend money on photography anymore. I can absolutely, with my hand on my heart, guarantee you they do and they want to spend it a lot. If you're trying to sell them rubbish, that was an edit point that I kept clean, if you're trying to sell them crap photography, that's why they won't buy it. Because they can do it themselves on a selfie. And the first thing, I usually show my beans on toast slide at this point, but it's been seen by too many people over the years, so we'll kind of ignore that. But what we've got to do is produce at least level of quality of this type of photography. It means something that they cannot do at home. Whether you like that photograph or not, that's not what we're on about. But we have to produce a quality of photography that stands heads and above everything else. Okay, so let's look at relationships first, because I mentioned the three price lists of about different photographers, but within your own business anyway, you can have your own three price lists. And we'd need it, in fact, because I would want a new lead to have a certain type of price list. So if they've come through 
from a directional route. Perhaps they bought a voucher or had a voucher bought for them, or they basically come through um, some form of gift, uh, gifting, not promotions. Thing. So something we've actively driven. So when we've talked about in the past going along to the school fates, we just missed all the school fates, it was a bit of a shame for you. Um, but if you go along to the school fate, you sell your, va your vouchers there. Anytime somebody buys something for a, val a value, traditionally they're going to spend more money with, with you than they would if they get it for free. That's guaranteed. Okay? So that's av av averages, percentages, whatever you want to do. A promotional client, and this is where I refer to the tap. So summer months for us when we were running the studio and, and uh, our busiest, we were running 1,000 sessions a year. That's a real machine, but it means that in the summer months when everybody thinks they want to go on holiday, studios become quiet. And for quite a few years, I relied on weddings filling the summer months more than anything else. Um, but then I realised my studio was shut on a Saturday. And then one day you had that light bulb moment. Just because I'm earning X, and okay, we used to earn quite a lot of money from our weddings once upon a time. And that was a discussion. But what I had was a studio space like here. This is criminal. Studio kind of ev everything. And it's not run as a photographic studio, which is, I think is just criminal by itself. That's a whole different discussion between me and Debbie. But what we had to rely on was dragging clients with some form into our studios no matter what. Um, for instance, the MPA used to run the H. Samuel promotion. Most of the photographers within the MPA group in Cardiff at one stage stuck a massive knife in my back because we were pretty much photographing 20 engagements a week. Poor old Gerald used to work for me at the time. Never wanted to see another engaged couple as ever he lived. Um, but why? Because we went to H. Samuel, we gave them all the displays, we gave them all our material first. So many of us criticise other photographers, oh, it's okay for them and whatever. But it's just really, they're going out there and doing it and they've got a bit of a machine to feed. So whatever you're doing, the promotion-wise, will have a different price list as well. And it's probably going to be a cheaper price list than it is your normal pri uh, price list. And then we have the past client, who is the client that we really want to keep forever. And that's where most of you lose them, which is really, really sad. We lose our communication between us and them. We forget about them. We don't mean to forget about them, but what happens then is that they've forgotten about us, so they never get around to doing it. So if we've got a past client, they all, we already know how these clients are going to spend. So we would rank them today on kind of uh, MailChimp, let's say, when we're doing email marketing to our databases. We'd rank them as platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. Platinum would be a thousand, above a thousand pound sale. A gold would be above 750. Uh, then we'd have our silver, which would be above 500 spend. And then you'd have your bronze above the 250. The ones that do not buy anything, which was one third of ours, a thousand sessions a year, a third of clients brought through promotions did not spend one penny with us. That drastically affects your average. <laughs> and you've got to be aware of that. However, the seesaw effect is really what it's about. It's making sure those who do spend, spend much higher, so you're always making a lot more money than a quiet studio relying on the big spenders going through. So for me, we, we always had a past client had a two-tier price list, and one was, as long as they're being photographed every two years with us, there's a discount automatically applied. We're classic. Uh, down, downstairs, there's three, or next door, in fact, there's three little kids sat on a, uh, a location shoot, and um, we hadn't photographed them for a while. And we were in town one day, and bumped into their mum and gran, and they said, oh, Mark, Debbie, how are you, blah, blah, blah. We thought you'd gone abroad and all that stuff. And they, oh, yeah, no, we're still in Sil Silverstone, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, and they said, oh, we haven't photographed you in a couple of years. And, they, and uh, we went, yeah, we noticed that you hadn't been in. And we contacted you and said, oh, we had a voucher from Venture. So we thought we'd give them a try. Seeing Debbie's face straight away, discount lost. Hard as nails, my wife. Yeah, they were in with us in the next year because all they did was moan about how much they spent at Vedger and they've actually forgotten how much they were spending with us. But they were spending so much money with us in a continual way that, in fact, during the course of 10, 10 years, the average that they were spending, if you looked at it within the, ved the Venture element, we would have outshone any kind of sales with it. It's not about the hard selling, it's about this relationship that we're making to them. So a new lead would have our standard pri price list, based on a two-tier, a price on the day, 
and a price following. So in other words, when they come back in for the viewing. A promotional price list would be a promotional product that probably we never had on the price list anyway, and it was special designed for that promotion itself. And then we'd have a past client price list, which actually had the normal price list here, but they knew they were going to save between 10 and 20%, depends on how long they've been with us. So it's, I believe there's not one price list for all. I want to keep a client coming back time after time. So as far as the service is concerned, this is our photography part, yeah? The first thing we need to do is make sure that we're outshining what their expectations are. Very few of us are doing that within our industry today. We've diluted the quality of the photography to a point where we're almost water instead of a, fla a flavorable drink. And that's something that we have to look at and we have to address. Otherwise, we're not going to produce what they can do themselves on a selfie. And if you look at the quality of the selfie today, I want about the teen kids and everything else. If we don't look after that before anything, then we have no industry. I stand here today knowing that if we do everything that I'm on about, we have got big money to make still from photography for at least another generation and a half. And there's not many people who can stand up here and say that. But if you put certain things in place, you can make sure it's going to work. Product. Those products are going to have to change. They're going to have to change because once upon a time, those who were in business in portrait photography expected a client to be buying big images for the wall. You would think. They weren't. Most photographers, going back 15, 20 years ago, still didn't have the, cover, uh, the confidence to be selling big images for the wall. We've almost thought they did, because they've all talked the crap, but in the reality, the photographers who said they were, were still not believing in their own photography and actually their own product to begin with. Whereas we know we put certain things in place, we do the, uh, the service quality, then we produce the products that we decide to sell to the client, all of that will guarantee a sale. Make one change in that, and that's, uh, it's a part of the kind of the value chain element that we've kind of talked about for a very long time. So let's just kind of look at digital files for a minute, and that goes without saying, USB, USB in print, USB in collections. I think you're all doing this so I can pretty much ignore it, okay? Um, the first thing I would say is that a USB is not something that is two or three quid that you get en masse. If you believe in the brand, if you believe in the value chain itself, you have to have a product that is more than self-fulfilling. It's not just a container of images. It's, it's a, a product that will actually show you off in a good light, even though probably they're the only ones who are ever going to see it. I mean, our sons got married over the past few years, and yes, of course, I was a tight Welshman, and so I paid the photographer and I bought the digital files. And I had them, though, on a lovely, funny enough, sil silver little USB heart. This is for me, though. I didn't want it. I just wanted a plain stick. I'm a bloke. And I think uh, Ro Ronan was telling me once upon a time that the average male photographer buys the clear stick with a black cap where the average woman photographer, must have still right, was actually the silver, uh, the silver heart within things, really. So it's kind of really funny, but I would have just been satisfied with the product. We're not satisfying us. We are raising our brand level so it feels to them that like, it's cute and it's lovely and everything else with it. And I know they've got all their products, but I bought ours from, down, uh, from downstairs and things, really. E even the basic product is something worth it because we can't sell CDs, DVDs anymore. Whether we like it or not, we just can't do it. So at least make it kind of functional. I'm going to really get off that one. USB and print, I think you all know that that is the future, and I just don't mean of baby photography, but it's, def it's definitely of the female photography, like bud uh, boudoir and so on. It's, it's pretty much the collections I want to con concentrate on for a minute. Uh, collections, for me, are the way for you to instantly, dramatically change your sales in portrait photography. Building collections from, say, if you're a desperado, you're going to need a collection beginning around about the 250 to 300 pound mark. And if you're a middle photographer, middle of the road, you're going to have a collection that starts at five. And if you're uh, an extreme photographer, you're actually going to have a collection that starts at 750. And this is all based on what you want your average sale to be as a minimum. That's the key thing. But building collections based around a USB is very, very powerful. If you go downstairs uh, along the long wall, right to the, cor uh, the corner, there's a, third, a 3020 image, 2108, and a 1010. And for the limited amount of clients that I have come in through my door now, they're past clients, that product, since it went on the wall in, I think it was May, has outsold anything else. We put that together with other things, 
then all of a sudden it starts to make a kind of a, a, a much bigger product. So in other words, products for the wall, products for the desk, in other words, a containment unit, that's really what we're at here, um, and then digital files. The most powerful thing you have today is selling digital files. Because if I even just go to the 25 pound mark, if I can include 20 images or 40 images based around that 25 pound, a USB, in fact, is worth 500 to 1,000 pound on the price list before it's discounted down. So a reason to buy more today on a collection is because we've included the USB along with other products. And it's a quicker way for you to jump straight away into the much, much higher sales. Anybody wants me to talk about that, I'll do it during the break before you all go. I will do that downstairs. But collections, if you haven't begun to, you could call them packages. Uh, you know, we've called them packages. We're not on about the 2108s, the 464s, and the mini prints you get at a school's package. That's what I refer to as a package, but a collection. Go. Yeah, there is pretty much um, no serv serv service charge applied to any portrait photography. Any discussions on that? You're very quiet on that. It's because you can't drive enough through your door. You think you can, but if you need the machine, and this is where we go back to the lifestyle and everything else, if you need to provide yourself with 20 sessions, let's say, per week, um, that's really what you're going to find it very difficult to do. I've got one of the experienced photographers. The experience is my kind of business group, right? One of the experienced photographers is involved with Cherubs and Emma's Diary and other, okay? And he's producing 15 to 17 sessions on average each week. But his av average is at a lower point. It's, a, it's below the £300 mark. However, if we take away Emma's Diary alone and the difficulty they are to show up. We can book lots of them. They cost us a lot of money to book. And I'm trying to convince him to drop them, but that's a whole different discussion, all right? Um, but if I take those out of the loop and I replace that five or 10 with the family, all of a sudden our average will actually jump to above 700 pound. It's our family photography that is propping up everything else. He believes because they're giving leads and so on, they're buying in the leads and kind of just going from that, that is the way to go because he can fill his diary. But filling a diary with, em with empty no-shows is not a busy photographer. And there's a difference there and things. And either, even with um, deposits for Saturdays and so on, it's still an empty diary and, I, and I'm concerned, especially when you're paying for somebody and their script to book your clients into your experience. They can't sell it. So the first thing would be, obviously... Don't lose that lead if you need those leads, but at least take away the booking into your own. You're cheaper to actually employ somebody to do the telesales, the booking in, than you are actually to pay for their kind of thing. There's lots of little ways, but that's a perfect example. And we're working on all he's given me now, like I do with many of the busy photographers with an exper experience. I ask them for one day that they can't touch it. One day, on a day that they're closed, we'll employ a photographer, we'll employ a new salesperson, we'll actually do my price list, we'll do my marketing, and I can show them how much we can actually generate in a very, very short time. That's the only way for me to change a busy business, because otherwise we're affecting the bread, uh, the bread line for some and so on with it. So, um, did that answer your question? Yeah, anybody else? Yeah, we only charge a booking deposit a deposit if we get to a point of more than 30 percent no shows we always charge a, a booking fee for a saturday though because that is prime family day for instance when we look if i'm a family photographer which we are or were what we would never do is have a child a single child on a saturday ever because that is the only one day of the week that i can actually guarantee that mum and dad can come in you know, so Sundays, for instance, one of my friends, they've still got a venture stu a studio, uh, one of only 15, I think there is now, which is a bit of a shame. Um, they tried to close a, sun a Sunday, and they did it for four weeks and realised with all the leads that they were generating, they had no days to fill them with, and they had to open up again. It's a bit of common sense with business and so on with it. So um, this is a bit of a, a kind of... <laughs> An example, I can't say who it's from, but it's one of the X2 group. So it's group two with an experience. Morning, mate. Can I ask advice, please? Because it just doesn't consist of 
us and you coming to my event and us doing our guru sessions and everything else, uh, Messenger all my week is basically based on this. And this is actually one for the 3XM guys, so it's really funny. Morning, mate. That's me. Uh, can I ask advice, please? Our 3XM 10x8 box, their sample box arrived and uh, turned up on tu uh, Tuesday. I've sold three already and I don't know if I'm pricing it right, um, though, or if it's just a great product and people love it. I've been, a I've been aiming at people that don't want wall art and just want digitals. So as you know, our digital package is 10 for 475, um, but we've been upselling the print box and app and they're 10 chosen images for 600 quid and people aren't batting an eyelid at the price. Is that about right or should I go more? People are loving it. So this is a brand new product that I've said to them they have to put in place because of their type of photography and straight away they're seeing a return. So for a cost of 75 quid, that the, basically the product costs us, we've increased profit by at least double that, or close to a double that. But more importantly, it's the average per hour. What you're not seeing is the average per hour on here. And what we're doing all of a sudden is giving peaks. We're doing those real kind of, and you, you don't even see them, but once we start hitting uh, the bigger averages and the busier that they are, it makes a massive difference to the whole running of your business with it. So then my reply is, um, I would play with the price a little. So how much is a hot dog? We've all heard that thing from by, uh, by now, I hope. Uh, the 600 is the full price or is the first viewing price. So we, as you know, I've always recommended that you use a two-tier price list. So in other words, if I wanted to, at the first viewing time, I want to sell this product for 600, 600 pound, I need an incentive for the client to buy it on that day and not go home and think about it. So we would actually be selling that at 800 quid is the, full, is the full price, but today it looks discounted and so on. So basically what you do is decide on the price you do want to sell it at and then add something else on top. Because that's an incentive straight away for them to actually go ahead and do it. So again, uh, 600 pounds is the full price of the viewing price. Don't get greedy. That's 500 quid prof profit. Let's not forget that. Who do you know that can earn 250 quid an hour in jobs? That's a, you know, you've got to be talk, talking basic solicitor, <laughs> basic doctor is on about that kind of money, not photographers who are earning majority of below national minimum wage. <laughs> so that's where we've got to put that in place and kind of look at it. So build a collection around it. That's the kind of the message on that. So this is a reply then straight away with it. So you can see it takes me a bit of a time to reply. Um, thanks, Mark. Just didn't know if I was shooting myself in the foot and at the price. Uh, we'll try 650. As I say, I'm happy with 600. Or maybe do another collection with multiple panel and the box. That's what I was on about the one downstairs, yeah? Um, we don't give them an option of two prices either. Didn't even have a chance to put it in our price list. Just happened to show it to three clients this week. Haven't even had a chance to put photos in the mounts yet. Right product, right clients, right price, you're making money. That's it. Wrong client, wrong price, wrong product, you're never going to make money at it. And thing, fingers crossed, you're going to get two out of the three. If you can hit two out of the three, you've got a business. If you've got three out of three, you're going to make a lot of money. And that is why we need to make sure that we, we are really looking at the kind, of the, the, the kind of the bigger picture as such. Any questions on that to begin with? Anybody on that? Okay, cool. Um, all you need is love, love. I can't sing, so I won't. All right, but that's it. You need to love your client. Love your client. They love you. You're theirs forever, except when they go to venture and then you, you, they lose their discount for the next visit. Um, but that's what we want. Repeat customers guaranteed. We work too hard to get clients in on day one. So it means that what we need to make sure, realistically, it's in year two or second visit that we're really going to earn our proper money from them. I'll give you an example. The academy, pretty much year one is a loss leader. Everything that it costs us to get you in in year one doesn't earn us any money at all. So that's why we need to make sure you're in our 82% of resigned sign-up rate in year two. Simple. 82%. 18% I've got to replace, plus I've got to build on 18% to get any bigger. Otherwise, it stands still. That's why this year we gave Academy the basic level away for free. And, um, because what we can do there, if you're in Academy, and if you're happy at Academy, you're going to have a year for free, you're going to enjoy it, you're going to go, great, love it, and everything else with it. If you've got a little bit of cash, then fingers crossed you'll upgrade to us. If you don't upgrade to us, it's no problem, but you'll just get the basic Academy level for now. So as far as the repeat customer is concerned, they are essential 
for real profit. I know so many newborn photographers who don't do the rest of the year or families or anything else. <laughs> so, okay, for well, some of them, they're earning really good money from it. If you get honesty from the real photographers, the majority of them, you'll actually find that the majority of them are still not earning anywhere near what the others are doing. So a newborn photographer who's going to turn over 1,700 to 3,000 pound per client is a business rocket, don't change it. But you need to make sure that you're doing at least your number each week. But if they're not able to offer the other serv ser services, at least find a photographer that is. Or if you are generating that much money from a, new, a newborn, you need to employ a photographer common sense when you start to think about it, you need to employ a photographer who will shoot kids or who will shoot families and then you just need to find somebody else who's going to go into your sales room and sell that work in exactly the same way. Because if they've got clients who are going to spend three grand but then they're disposing of that client, you may as well shoot the photographer in the head in my opinion. Um, I, I don't stand on any fences as you gathered, yeah? <laughs> but you may as well, isn't it? You may as well go, well, bye. Enjoy the rest of your life and going to spend all that money with all the other photographers and you just say goodbye to it. What you just need to do is actually set another photographer up to work for you so you can actually have a little, a little bit of bigger slice of the pie in the repeat mode. Okay, um, this is just again one of the exper experiences. This happened a couple of days ago again and uh, I just thought we'd kind of show that today. Last year we had one shoot in the whole of August. We blame it on the summer holiday. Do you know what? We all blame things on something else. It's never about our own marketing or our own business. It's amazing how we can do it. You know, all the hotels uh, moan when there's an odd year for weddings. 2013, 2015, 2001, so on and so on. An odd year is lower in weddings than an even year. What have they done to market to the odd years? That's what I would ask them, isn't it? If you know it's gonna be quiet, on average, you better do a flipping good deal to attract in what's missing in, in kind of the common sense within things, really. So um, these actually joined with us at the end of last year, so, te so technically they're group two. Um, but with the little tap, we twitched on a little bit. As you can see, this year we have four, 14 books so far and still taking bookings. I really can't thank you both enough for how you've held helped us, uh, our future looks so bright and exci exciting. These are really, that's what I do this for, to be honest. Um, it's, it's a real kind of great reward for all the kind of the time that we put in and things, but that's only a few week, weeks ago. This is a bit of a, despera a des desperado, new, stu a new studio in the past 18 months, uh, beautiful place, nobody else with it, um, but no clients, no real clients, not the right clients as well. So for the quality of his premises, the quality of what he needed to do and what he's kind of turn over, uh, turn over, attracting all the wrong things. So once more, we put Desperado in. First of all, make me money. That's the first thing. Get busy, make sure we hit our average, whatever it would be, we're guaranteed to win uh, money. Anything above that and so on. So this is a Desperado price in here. So as you can see now, uh, I just tickled him with how... How's the promotion sessions and viewing? Hi, Mark. Good, thanks. We had 18 sessions in this week. Last year, last week, 12 booked. Uh, week after finding, we're getting no show, uh, getting more no shows. So he was one of the ones that we instigated the £20 for a Saturday for the promotion. We play with the weekday, but we don't want to put the hurdle. We don't want to close the door to stop them coming through the door anyway. All right, we just need to actually play around with that for a couple of weeks. Sales are a lot better since the last update. We had three at 500 quid, sales at 250-ish sales. So straight away, he's performing above, in fact, what the Desperado price list is. That's key. So when we put in the collections, they're obviously minimizing what we're costing us because we need to know this is 75 quid. We need to know that because then we need to know how we're going to sell it because as a rule, we used to times it by five or six, didn't we, as a, as a rule. There ain't no rules if you haven't got any money. <laughs> There's none. You can't, it's great to say, oh, well, you know what, I charge 900 quid for a 34 to 40 on the wall. How many of those do you sell? None. <laughs> Doesn't matter how much you charge for it. We had 30, 40s on our wall. We didn't sell many of them. You know, if we were selling one or two a year, I would say, Debbie would exaggerate that and say probably one a, qu a quarter, I've got no idea, one involved in sales. But that's what you've got to do, is actually just make sure what you are doing with your price list is absolutely right for your client and for your product. 
So let's just kind of finish off with a couple of little things. Who is your target market? I know what ours was. It's a family. Easy for me to identify, easy for me to go after. Some of you in the room will be baby photographers. Specifically, you'll go after them. Some of you will just be wedding photographers and so on. Qualify, qualify, qualify. Now, what we mean by that is if we've attracted them in, so who we just saw a minute ago, they switched on the tap, had 300 leads within 48 hours. You can't do that. We can do that. Their own leads, not buy-in leads. We did that, okay? And what they need to do then is qualify. So if they're desperado, uh, desperado they need as much work as the, through the door as they can. And by the way, the last guy we saw is a one-man band. That's almost impossible to manage because a one-man band can only shoot five sessions a week as a rule. That's it. Five sessions, five edit, five market, five sale, five finish. But when <laughs> hits the fan, you have to become more than one man, as it were. But straight away, we're generating so much more money now within a very short time. He can see the future's bright. Now he can get somebody in to do the telesales. In other words, to get them booked in. He can get somebody in to do the viewing so he can be the photographer and so on with it. So qualifying them would be, okay, you know some of you, I was based in Kinkoid, yeah, for our last uh, nine years of our studio, seven years of our studio, sorry. And I wasn't, is anybody from outside the Cardiff area? Okay, about half of you. So I don't want splot clients. <laughs> I wanted Kinkoid, Rabina, Liz Vane, Whitchurch, uh, Penny Lan, Landaff, specific who my clients are. So if I did a promotion doing something as such and we had 100 or 200 apply for that promotion, we would literally go through the questionnaires or the, ed the entries and go, well, they're from Splot, they're not my client in the bin. Now for the Desperado client, if I was the Desperado at that point, I would say, yes, they're mine, but they're going to be in summer months when I'm quiet. So it's kind of just using them, knowing that probably they're going to spend less. It doesn't mean because they live in Liz Vane that they'll buy anything bigger than the 7 by 5 in a silver frame, all right? But that's besides the point. Um, but qualifying them is absolutely a said for me. Ensure that my type of client, so I want to make sure they are a family. So on our questionnaire, whatever it would be, or if we're doing something out in the public, I need to make sure they are a, fam a family and what they are and so on. Will there be a long-term client, client or a quick fix? Uh, what I'm looking at, as I said, is the family and the young family or I'm looking for uh, pretty much a full nester. The full nester is a family with grown-up kids. They're a one hit. The only thing else I'm going to get is graduation, wedding, and baby. That's it. But with the long-term client, they're coming in from the ages of at least two to three years' age, and they will be back to me every two years. If you put these pieces together, they make your, biz your business, but it's understand understanding how you make up your week. Because obviously, if it's a family, that's all I do. It means I'm busy on a Saturday and Sunday. I'm not busy during the course of the week. So it's other things to apply it with. What's the business short-term goals? That's for you. They should be short-term between six, 12 months, and two years. Then the long two years would be three years and beyond. So I'd be looking at a three, a five, and a 10-year plan. I'm looking at the business cycle of what's going on around me and what's going on around everybody else. So we would be looking now at how Brexit will change things, if it will change things. If it does change things, how am I going to change me? If I'm not ready for it, the Bank of England, within hours of the, the, uh, the, the loss, said, chill, we're prepared. They, they're intelligent people like we are, and they're looking for, forward enough to know what is going to be the bad times. They've got to look at that, and you have to do that in the same way. And as far as the analysing of trends, um, we've got to see what's going around. So if I was a newborn photographer, I mean, did you see re recently about the cake smash on television? There was a model programme, and they were interviewing uh, or uh, doing a casting for babies for a cake smash ad advert for a national company. I think they were making the cakes. I don't think they've launched, but anyway. Um, but they gave us... Uh, all of a sudden, an awareness that if you were involved in cake smashes in some... I think they're pathetic, to be honest. Um, but that's me. <laughs> different taste for different people. It's like, I'm not really... I love my dog at present. I'd kill her because she makes too much noise, but anyway. Um, I love my dog, but I'm not going to hang her on my wall unless it's by a rope. Yeah? I'm not going to buy a big image at all, guaranteed. Why? It's just not me. I like nice stuff on my wall, doesn't include my dog. However, if you were kind of providing me with funky images, 
that would soon suit my home, perhaps I'd be a conversion. But if all you're going to do is turn, turn up, stick it in a landscape or stick it in a studio with average light and everything else, but with a goofy smile on the dog's face, am I going to buy it? No, I'm not. I'm, but, so I'm not your client. But give me something different, and there's a possibility I am your client. But we do have to look at the analyzing of trends. So what I was on about seeing that alone of the cake smash, it would have to make me think on that night while I'm watching that pro, uh, the program, do I need to put this into my business model now or in the, fu uh, the future? Why? How much will it generate? And so on. Um, just quickly then, let's just kind of finish off with knowing your product. That is essential. And it doesn't mean because it's been on your wall for two years, you know that pro product. Um, we recently actually, when the experience group were down, uh, we did actually uh, the bag. So it's kind of a black bag, and we put products in there. There was a pineapple and a frame and a, a mouse and something else. Dig in their hands, they pull it out, and they have to sell it to me in a minute. All right? They have to know the power of this. And don't sell the sizzle. That I means don't sell the steak even, sell the sizzle. They were all going, it's a pineapple. <laughs> it's funny shaped. It's good in fruit salads. But they weren't going, don't get put off by what it looks like. Because inside, it's juicy and fleshy. It will make your mouth absolutely want another bite. That's knowing your product. It's not about, this is a 24-inch. It'll look good somewhere. You have to sell that sizzle straight away to the client instead of selling them just the image itself. They're not interested in sizes, I promise you. They're interested where the image will go. If you go into Studio 2 before you leave, uh, if we get a chance, uh, I'll kind of talk about the viewing setup in there if you want. But straight in front of where the client would sit is exactly what we want the client to buy. Straight in front of them, because if you don't put in front of the client what you want them to buy, if you put it behind them, they're not going to be looking around. They're going to be looking at what the product is in front of the viewing room the whole time. Show, don't tell. So you basically pick up your product. Boudoir. You know, I, I love this product. I'm not sure if you love it or not. <laughs> um, but for me, it's absolutely... If they didn't want prints in mounts, but they want to start the collection off, that is magic. I try and think like a woman. It's very hard being a man. Okay? To think like a woman, even a fraction of it. But we've based all our business over, over the years... Trying to understand what a woman will buy from us because she is my client. Even though I'm attracting in a family, really I'm attracting in the woman. And some of you heard me for years say, if you get the woman, you get ev everything else. You get everything. Uh, and that's what you've got to do. So that product, USB and print, for me, is the, fu uh, the future. Many of you think, in fact, print is dead. Print is only dead because we've made it too expensive. There's a generation of teens coming through us now who've never experienced print. They know they can go to Tesco's with their iPhone and get 200 7 by 5s for 5 quid or whatever it is. They know that, but as a photographer, we've got no product that will give the client what they actually want. That, that's the key thing, is knowing who the client is and what products you are going to have for them, because that's the only way we can sell it to them. Um, understand your target customer. That obviously is kind of just going back to where it was, so we can know where they shop, so we can go get them. Referrals is a thing that I hope you're all doing, because even if you asked uh, every one of your clients coming through you for just two of their friends, you're probably, uh, let's say you're doing 100 sessions a year, you're probably only going to generate between five and ten referrals out of everybody that gives you two. They, they just won't come as many as you think. But that's just been buying times. We were looking at cherubs re recently with one of the other photographers, and, and pretty, pretty much we're ready to drop them because we don't need them. Uh, there's nothing wrong. If cherubs works for you, you use it. But for this photographer, they're wasting time. It's too much energy getting the client through the door for us to actually warrant what they spend. So, um, but with another photographer, with the cherubs, uh, they're not asking for the refer referrals. We're having to hit them four times before we get a book in. So out of 100 leads, they're getting 20 in. That's pathetic. In, in the scale of work you've got to do. So we've just changed it around to four hits in different styles. I can't tell you them all because we worked it out specifically for him. But in a way that will actually attract more and we're already doubled the number of coming through just because we're looking outside of the box. It's just not the one letter out and forget about them. We're hitting them in four different ways now. We've made a magic success on that. Okay, I'll turn it back to you. 
Okay? Jilly, your friend, excuse me, I don't know your name. Jilly has just referred you as one of, as to come through our experience, yeah? This is from Jilly. This is a gift from Jilly. There's not many are going to say no to that, is there? No. If you're my wrong client, that's a problem. Fingers crossed, Jilly has spent in excess of what I need her to spend. Above our average, in other words. And by that point, I'm asking her, would you like to give the gift to one of your friends of one of our experiences? Instantly, they either say yes or no. And what's it cost? Look, nothing. We give them the full experience. We give them the gift like you had as well with it. But it's just a way that we work with our community marketing. And that's a word that I use a lot, is community marketing. And if you think about it, you can use that word very, very easily within any business. It doesn't matter if you're an equine photographer, a dog photographer, a pet photographer, you name it. It's just how you use your community. So a referral from Jilly to you, even if she gives me two or three refer referrals, if I'm lucky, I'm going to get 0.5 of you across the board. If we're really heavy on it, we do a clever job and we're not too expensive, then we're going to hit a much bigger average. And this is where, for so many photographers, they're kind of getting frustrated. We did a uh, Mother's Day uh, little thing last year within the group, and one guy had 25 apply, another one had one apply. Still cost you nothing, it's one more than you had the day before, and if that client spends the 250 350 whatever kind of desperado price list you're on or the extreme, then they're right. It's just getting the percentage. So for me, we would be giving you a portrait experience with us and a product as well. That's our, uh, I'm making sure that you come back for a viewing. If I don't give you a product, you will not come back to us. Yep. Um, so then referrals are said, and then last but not least is make sure you price your product what is right for you. Competitively is, for many photographers, the essential word. And perhaps for yourself, because the £75 per digital image, you can perhaps put it into the extreme. So you can, the different business levels of what you want to do. So how much are we going to sell? So if we're running a promotion and we're going to generate 100 clients coming through us, we know that in excess of 75% of those clients will come through the session experience with us. And of that, 80% plus will spend our average. That's what we need to know. When you're quiet, when you're not having enough work going through your door, you can't do those figures. Or you're not having time to do those figures. Perhaps you're kind of just working a little bit as you go along with it. Um, but price competitively, it doesn't really matter how much you charge. All you need to make sure. So let's, let's go back what is, I still think, probably the best product on the market today. Um, print box USB. You've got a product, like I was just doing with um, the, the guy on there that I was saying. So for him, he's selling that at 600 quid. That includes, did he say 6 or 10 on the USB? I can't, 10, was it? Okay. So that's just down to that deci uh, decision. My question would be, well, why not give them all? Why not give them all? If you're happy with that for 600 quid, unless he's going, we can buy this at 600 pound, or for 650, you can have 20 images on there. So just instigate it a little bit more. If, we, if we're already hitting an average of acceptance, then we've got to actually look at how we can push the client other puts more. So I would definitely put that in at a £900 price, and I'd much prefer to have it for sale in the viewing room at six, if that was him, because the client knows today if I buy that, I'm saving £300. It's just right for you and so on. But on another one of you, in the Desperado price, price list, we have this just selling now on the, des uh, the Desperado list at below the £300 mark. It's just the right thing. It's, seven, it's 75 quid, approximately. By the time you fill it with your prints and everything else, you, you, you're going to be around about 100 pounds. How much do you need to earn? And if we go back to the digital files that we were on about before, um, there's not many photographers earning or turning over, we'll say, 1,000 pounds a day. There's not many in our, in our industry. So go back to what we were on about, and we look at just the USB sales. If every client goes away with a USB with however many images on it, 200 pound, all you need to do is get five clients in per day, every day, and you're a 1,000 pound photographer. That's a 300,000 pound biz business based on USB, isn't it? 
it's x times x equals. So just when you're hearing all the other photographers go in how much they charge, don't worry about that. Design your business, because that's absolutely essential for you. Because, yeah, for a photographer who has one client per week, and that client is spending 2,000 quid, that's a lot of money. But if we can do the math, and we can actually just generate enough clients going through your door, then it's amazing how much money you're going to earn from it. Say again, sorry. So as far as giving out prices to customers? Yeah, so at, at the end of se session, guaranteed. At the, end, at the end of the photo shoot? Absolutely guaranteed. They have to know what they're coming in for. If you hide away from your pri pri price list, they're shocked, and they're just going to end up a percentage of cancelling the order the next day because they've overspent. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm doing at the moment, but then some people say you get more clients through the door if you put your price up on the website. Nope. Weddings from, portraits from, that's different. Yeah. So, you know, at the end, end of the day, if you turn around, very few photographers, in fact, would actually buy what we sell for. So if you came to me, I would want to know that you're going to actually spend X amount of money. You'd probably be put off coming to me. Or you'd go to another photographer, let's say, and you had a good experience, but not a great experience, but in your head, you're wondering what Mark Cleveland could have done for you better. We all do it. We all buy a car of a thing, and then we go, we should put the leather seats as well. Oh, now I've got to buy a sat-nav. You know, oh, flipping heck. You know, I'd like the self-adjustable -adjust seat. We all second out. Do you buy shoes? You buy shoes. My wife doesn't buy enough shoes, in my opinion. But one of the greatest experiences for her... No, she doesn't. She doesn't spend any money on herself. It's really weird. She's a perfect woman, in my opinion. <laughs> All right? Um, but when our first son got married, I promised her and his wife Jimmy Choose for the wed wedding day. I think that's fair. Yeah? And we weren't paying for the wedding dress for her. We were contributing towards the wedding, like, you know, all pa parents do. But I joked to Laura, when we were out in Vegas years before, and we walked past the Jimmy Choose shop, I said, I said to her, when you get married, I'll buy your shoes for you. And she got in touch with me, obviously, when they announced the wedding and everything else with it. About six months prior to the wedding day itself, she spoke to me one-on-one, -on -one and she said, you know you said you were going to buy me the shoes. Was that real? I said, any time. And the buying experience, though, Laura bought hers online, okay? And she was the bride. Loved them, looked brilliant, didn't want to get them wet, and it was peeing down with the rain on their wedding day. It's a whole different discussion, all right? But I took Debbie to, Lo to London, and I just didn't take Debbie into Harrods to buy them. I took them around the corner from Harrods to go into the Jimmy Choo shop. I wanted her to have the most exceptional service she ever had buying those shoes because I know when she puts on those shoes, she is going to remember the full experience. It's not about how much money you save. If something is really worth the money, you really make sure that you're maximizing that experience from the beginning because price is never brought in to the discussion. Did that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. It, and that's why we call our business group the experience, because I absolutely, that's what we built our career on. You know, and it doesn't matter what anybody else has said, I haven't won the lottery. People in the room know how hard we've worked, wherever it is. Every penny that we have earned in our lives ever since I began to work for a photographer at 18 has been generated from photography. That's it. And, and that's what you've got to kind of accept. And there's still not a month goes by that I don't discuss with Debbie in hiring a photographer and hiring a salesperson to use this space when it's not being used. Except we've already got three businesses running and she says we can't. Anyway, thanks everybody. Uh, anybody wants to have a look through to Studio, uh, studio 2 later on, please do that. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Ronan, for allowing me to kind of talk. And